All right, let's begin now talking with the fourth dimension. And the reason we want you to understand what the fourth dimension is, is because this is the playground of the subconscious. The subconscious is the animator of our life. It is that driving creative force through which all things are manifested. And we are in, at all times, an intimate relationship with the subconscious. In fact, we are as a spirit or as a soul contained within what we could also call the consciousness. But the consciousness has aspects. In fact, there are two aspects to the consciousness, which is the whole of who it is that we are in this reality. And it's a male aspect and a female aspect, if you will. And this is just our way of explaining, the, of explaining through language that you understand how they work. The male aspect of the consciousness is the thinker that we are. It's that part of us that conceives ideas and that runs affirmations. It's also the part of us that encompasses the ego mind or the monkey mind. And a lot of people speak about the ego in a pejorative sense or in a disparaging sense. But in reality, in 3D reality, the ego actually serves us greatly, but it can get away from itself. And so this is part of what we work with when we do disciplined techniques to bring the mind into submission. But it is the thinking aspect of who it is that we are. And it's through the thinking of things and allowing these thinking patterns to develop, we give it time and space through thinking them, that we then begin to feel some kind of way about what we're thinking. You know, we can have ambient thoughts about this or that, and they really don't affect us very much. But if we begin to run those thoughts on a loop, over time, we begin, they, they get heavier in terms of energetic resonance and heft. And over time, they begin to be more important and we feel our way into them. And now, once we feel what we're thinking, now what we're doing is creating. That's the, those are the two things that have to happen in order for us to create a reality. We have to think it, conceive of it, and we have to feel it. And the way that it ultimately gets created is the subconscious, which is the second aspect. It is the female aspect of the consciousness, the totality of who it is that we are. The subconscious receives the thought and the feeling and says, yes, I rise to that. I agree with that and I will create that in the reality, in the exact likeness as you have presented it to me. And you presented it with a feeling of joy. And so I create for you joy. You presented this thought to me with sadness. And so I create for you identically based on the feeling that transmitted it. And we have more conditions of sadness. This is how it works. And so 4D is important, again, because it is the natural habitat, if you will, of the subconscious. When we go to sleep, we are, in fact, quite busy. The astral body, or the, the, the most proximate light body to which we have access, literally separates from the physical body as we sleep. Now, we are still present to some degree in the physical body, but really we are more totally or in the majority occupying this astral light body. We are connected with that astral light body by what some people call the silver cord, and it's just a, it's just a channel. It's a kind of cord that keeps us tethered as our astral body travels and does what the astral body knows what to do. But in the astral, we do all sorts of things as spirits and souls, because the fourth dimension is a portal dimension. And that's the first dimension into which we project ourselves in this most proximate light body. We split from the physical body. We begin to occupy the astral body in the majority, meaning we still have some residual energy in the physical that's in the 3D. But for the most part, we are in this astral light body. And now we begin to hop around. And the first landscape we encounter is the landscape of the dreamer. It is 4D, but it's not just for the dreamer. It's also the landscape of the recently deceased. When you die, when I die, we're going to pop out of the physical body, much like we do every single day when we go to sleep, and we're going to pop into 4D, but we will not have the tether. We will not have the connection that keeps us connected to the physical body. Instead, we're just going to find ourselves in 4D, and we will know what to do from there. Most of us will, not all of us. Some of us are disoriented and confused, but most of us know where to go once we're in the 4D. But there's a lot more than just dreaming happening in the 4D reality. 
The 4D reality I like to describe as an umbrella dimension. There is an umbrella effect that happens. This is 4D, like a membrane. And under 4D is 3D and 2D and 1D. And above 4D, we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or whatever construct, dimensional construct you subscribe to. I subscribe to dimensions of light, typically. So 1 through 12 is what I work with. And I, I, don't, I don't purport to know exactly how it works. I don't think anybody does, but it works for me based on what I experience. So above this membrane, this umbrella type dimension, which is the fourth, we have these higher dimensions and many different consciousnesses actually exist within those dimensional realities. For example, Christ consciousness exists within the fifth dimension. Um, sound and light and resonance also exist in the seventh, eighth and ninth. Your higher angels, your um, archangels, if you will, can travel the entire dimensional construct. Um, some angels are fixed into different dimensions, some are just in fifth, but they can project out into others, but that's where they orient from, just as we here now are in the third dimension. We're fixed here right now, but we can project out into other dimensions if we use things like meditation and other techniques. But every being that exists in five through 12, dimensionally speaking, in order to access us here in 3D reality, must do so through the portal the doorway dimension of 4D. What happens when we go to sleep is we pop out, we find ourselves in this familiar landscape that we enter every single night, and then we have some choices. We know this is a portal dimension, and we can very immediately say, well, very immediately, we can immediately say, I'd like to go to the seventh dimension. I'd like to see Archangel Metatron. I would like to speak to my spirit guides. I would like to attend a certain type of training. We know that we can access all other dimensions through this initial landscape. Additionally, those beings can enter in to the fourth dimension while we are there and interact with us. And so many of us actually have rendezvous, if you will, with angels and spirit guides and deceased loved ones and earthbound spirits in the fourth dimension. I will say that angels will hang, they'll pop in, but they don't hang out there for very long because they are so high vibration and fourth dimension encompasses many different divergent energies. Spirit guides, the ones that we have, will pop into the fourth dimension to interact with us, but we get pulled away with them to a higher vibration from there. They don't hang out there. There are only a few different types of beings that will hang out for prolonged amounts of time in the fourth dimension. The first type of being would be the dreamer, as I just discussed when we dream. Some of us just mill about in this weird, freaky, uh, fun house type of a dimension, and we have different experiences, some of which are good, some of which are nightmarish. There are other occupants of the 4D, though, that stay there on purpose. And these are typically what we would call earthbound spirits. Earthbound spirits are human spirits or consciousnesses that died. So they had a life, they had an incarnation, and they popped into 4D. But at some point, they either chose or they didn't know that they could choose to stay in 4D. Everybody who dies gets an opportunity to cross into the light or go through the portal that the fourth dimension offers. Most of us know this when we get there because we've lived many lives before. We know how it works as soon as we're there. Some, however, are disoriented. They are confused. For example, people who spent years and years in a state of uh, dementia or with Alzheimer's or with mental confusion of some kind, sometimes they will take a little while to get their bearings in 4D and get aligned with the vibration there and understand what's happening. Uh, other people who tend to get stuck uh, in 4D would be those who died in a very traumatic way. It's not that they're necessarily not clear about what they need to do next, it's that they don't really want to because they want their murder to be resolved. They want to comfort people or something happens so very quickly they want to understand what happened in the earthly life before they actually transition and so they choose to stay in this fourth dimension. The other earthbounds, which I personally think are the ones we tend to connect with through divination a lot, are um, beings who understand that they should be going through that portal. They should be going through the light to the other side, but choose not to because they fear 
what's going to happen to them on the other side, and that's usually because they've lived lives that weren't they they weren't full of integrity, or maybe they committed a lot of sins. Maybe they are caught up in a, a religious moral construct and they are worried that they'll go to hell if they go through the light. Others are just malicious. Others are just base. And they like the energy that you can find on earth. We've got a lot of addictive type energy. We've got alcohol. We've got sex. We've got all kinds of things that a baser type personality would be more interested in rather than passing through the light and going to some other side that they don't, they don't know what they're going to get. These beings, these earthbound spirits, irrespective of the reason they're there, are usually not worth spending our time with. Like, they're just people who are dead, but they're people and they're making choices not to pass because maybe they're bad people who are in spirit form or they're disoriented. There's really nothing to learn from an earthbound spirit. The only way I would say, or the only reason I would say we wanna hang out or spend time with one of these spirits is if we can help them to understand where they are, because maybe they're in that disoriented state, and to help them to transition into the light and through to the other side. There are a lot of psychics and intuitives who do this kind of soul rescue, who very purposefully go into 4D through meditation or during sleep time and look for these lost souls. Truly, this is the exact meaning of this kind of a word, lost. They're just wandering around and they don't know what to do and they're not recognizing. And so they go in kind of like triage or kind of like EMS or EMT to help them understand and then to get them through the light. And that's noble work and that's beautiful. It's high vibration. But people who like pop up on the Ouija board just to see who they can talk to or they get their pendulum out and they just want to see who's in the room and can you spell your name? You're normal. Most times, <laughs> 90 percent of the time you are going to be talking to one of these lower level earthbound entities who are intelligent and who are who, for whatever reason are choosing not to cross into the light and they either want to deceive you or they want to interact with your energy or they just want to waste your time it's very very important therefore when we work with these types of divination techniques to be very intentional about what we're doing and to set that space open that space and close that space with that intention and tell all of these beings you got to go now we're done but that's not what we're here to talk about the fourth dimension is where these types of beings tend to exist and tend to be when we send up that flare of light if you will asking to make this type of a connection. When we have lucid dreams, and some of us have had those, well first let me explain what that is. A lucid dream is when you realize in the midst of a dream that you are dreaming. And some of us take the next step from the lucid dream into an outright out-of-body experience. But being lucid in a dream is just that. It's being conscious and aware that, hey, I'm dreaming. I'm flying and I shouldn't be flying. Or you'll, you'll be walking through a landscape of a dream and you'll see somebody who's long since been passed and you'll realize, hey, this can't be happening in my real 3D life. I'm in 4D. I'm dreaming. And with lucid dreams, you can attempt to control them. And in fact, that's, that's what we should be doing. We should attempt to realize, hey, I'm 4D right now. I have access to a portal. I can go higher. I can have these other types of experiences. Most people, though, just kind of drift within the lucid dream and they wake up later remembering that they dreamt and that they were conscious and aware in a dream. An out-of-body experience is when somebody goes lucid, typically within a dream, not always, and then begins to intentionally control that dream. You could read the books of, for example, Robert Monroe, it's a plane, Robert Monroe um, of the Monroe Institute. He wrote far journey. He wrote many books. I'm not even going to go into all the books that he wrote, but he had his first OBE, his conscious and aware out of body experience when I think he was in his fifties and he was so flummoxed by it. And he was so, he was just so interested in it that he created the Monroe Institute in order to study out of body experiences. And you can go there now and I'd love to do this someday. I think it's a couple thousand dollars to spend a week at the Monroe Institute and you will just get induced into out of body experiences where you can then have all these different experiences. Robert Monroe did such extensive work that he even mapped out the astral. He mapped out the different quadrants or sectors, if you will, of the fourth dimension and potentially higher dimensions than that, although that's completely subjective. You can also read the work of Robert Bruce. He wrote 
Astral Dynamics. He's got a YouTube account and he talks all day long about out-of-body experiences and he has fantastical adventures in the fourth dimension and beyond. But OBEs and lucid dreams tend to happen in fourth dimension, but if we're conscious and aware enough, we can take them from 4D into the higher dimensions. Now, another interesting aspect of 4D I do want to tell you is that it is an access point or a portal, not just for us to go out, but for others to go in, like I said, angels and different types of higher vibration energy come through the membrane of 4D. But <sighs> how do I describe this spirit? If you were to look at our dimensional construct in terms of a linear line, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 12. And that we could call our house. We could call that our known universe, okay? But there are other universes that exist. And some of these universes are very proximate to our own. They have the same dimensional construct and they have similar type things going on. And we would call these parallel universes. They're not so far removed from us that we, we don't feel they're familiar or they're recognizable. And in these parallel dimensional universes and constructs, so not in our house, okay, not in our 12 dimensions, and that again is subjective, how many dimensions that we have. We have these parallel universes and beings can jump and use portals and access points from their parallel house into our parallel house. And I'm not going to get crazy about it because I could talk to you about this for a long time. But one of the types of beings that like to jump into the fourth dimension from this weird parallel universe, not necessarily our own, is what I've come to believe, are what we would call shadow people. Have any of you out there ever had an experience with a silhouetted being at night? Maybe you saw a silhouetted being standing in the corner of your bedroom when you were a child. M many children, in fact, have had experiences with these shadow beings and are typically struck with incredible fear, which the shadow being really likes because it's that fear signature that is a very close match to their own. They actually get emboldened and activated and animated by consuming this level of fear, whether it's an, a child or an adult. I'm not sure yet who these beings are, where they're from. I only know that as we continue to modify our own vibration and as I believe ascend up in our own dimension, and we have levels within this dimension, we are gonna have access to more and more of these types of beings. And you're seeing this now with shadow people or with the being you would call the hat man. You're seeing people all over the world having more and more experiences. I have, been, I have done readings for clients and they begin to explain this encounter that they had that they've never told any, anybody about because they don't wanna just, they don't wanna speak it into existence again and four words in I know exactly who they've had an encounter with and when I describe who it is that they actually saw they can't believe that anybody knows what they're talking about and I'm like are you kidding me so hundreds of thousands of people around the planet are having this experience shadow people enter into our 3d reality from 4d and so do a lot of other lower vibration beings Lower vibration sounds like a judgment, and I don't mean it that way. That it's a dissonant energy. We orient to the light. We are created by source energy, and source energy feels a certain way to a 3D human being. We call that love, and when we feel source energy in our physical body, we call that love or bliss or joy or light. We recognize that. We are familiar with that signature. Shadow people, for example, and alternatively, don't feel like that. They feel oppositional to that. They feel devoid of love and light. We know their, their signature based on how we feel in our physical body. And I would say to you that these beings are farther away from source on the grand scheme of things or on the spectrum than we are as consciousness. But um, they can be very powerful and many people are very frightened by shadow people. And as I, as I tell my students, um, 
they, they make me angry because people get so overwhelmed by the fear and the terror that they become victims as a result of it. But if you can very quickly self-correct out of your fear and say, oh no, you don't. You don't get to come in here and do that to me in my space. You can take control of the situation. You can end these types of encounters. But because of the fear being so terrible, people feel like victims. Shadow people can be found in 4D. Um, a lot of us end up having weird encounters in the dream state in 4D and we wake up and we think we've had a nightmare. No, what we're really doing is processing an astral encounter by using images that we've taken with us and that we can understand in 3D. There's a lot going on in 4D. The one thing you need to understand about this dimension is that you have full access to it. This is a natural part of being human. We spend one third of our lives in 4D. And for those of us who meditate and meditate um, for long periods of time, we spend even more time in 4D. And it's a powerful, magnetic, and sometimes high vibration dimension. This is also the dimension from which we receive creative inspiration. You know, Human beings like Nikola Tesla, for example, who, who said himself that he was talking to aliens. <laughs> or human beings like Albert Einstein, who discovered the theory of relativity during an exercise of active imagination when he was hanging out in 4D. These beings had to learn themselves how to pop out of 3D and into 4D, but stay aware. Don't fall totally asleep. Instead, stay conscious and aware in 4D in order to receive what the higher dimensions were sprinkling down from their dimensions through 4D. If they spent enough time in 4D through meditation or otherwise, they were able to receive divine instruction and come up with the theory of relativity, come up with all these different types of solutions. And, and this is how you have mathematicians who have no formal training coming up with huge proofs or etc. They, I, I'm, I'm not a mathematician. I shouldn't have even picked that, but they're coming up with information that they should never know that, what was that guy's name? The Indian mathematician from turn of the century, excuse me, 18th to 19th. I, I always forget his name. He came up with a lot of proofs. I think they're just figuring out those proofs now or like in the nineties, eighties, nineties. He was so advanced and there was really no reason for him to be. He's, he's in 4D. He's, trained himself to such a degree that he can receive this divine inspiration. And that's what we can all do. If we learn how to meditate and to be in the space of 4D while still being in 3D sufficiently so as to remember it. Now, do you know one of the most powerful and magnetic intuitive states is the hypnagogic state, that state we get into that's like a trance right before we fall asleep and also just as we are waking up. I've talked about this before, but it's so important. In that state when we're tranced out, when we're not quite awake anymore, but we're not all the way asleep, we are straddling. We are riding the lightning. We've got one foot in 3D and one foot in 4D. And if we can learn how to elongate the hypnagogic state, if we can learn how to stretch it out and stay aware for as long as possible, we can receive huge amounts of information. We can start working with our spirit guides, our angels, or divine high dimensional information in that state. And we enter into it two times every day, very naturally. The fourth dimension is incredibly important because this is where we receive this inspiration. And this is where we go every single night when we fall asleep. There's a lot of weird stuff there, a lot of people get scared in fourth dimension, but there's no reason to be afraid. Remember, if you're experiencing it, whether 3D, 4D, or any D, any house, you're sovereign in it. As consciousness, as our spirit, as our soul, the totality of who it is that we are, we came into each incarnation and into this one, especially with something called dominion. Dominion is given by source to us, the higher selves who are having these various interactions in life and in experience. Source gave us dominion. And if we are having the experience, we are in control of it. And if we do not like what is happening there, we say, stop, I don't want that. We say, what are you doing? Get thee behind me, Satan. We say to that mountain, 
jump into the ocean and it must. We have dominion in 4D and in 3D. And I'll tell you something else. We have a representation of ourselves. So Crystal has a crystal in 5D. Crystal has a crystal in 6th and 7th D. Now Crystal in 7D resembles to some degree Crystal in 3D. So she must be pretty. I'm joking. <laughs> no, but she, we kind of inform. We look very similar in the various dimensions within a single house. But we don't just exist in one dimension in a house. We exist in all of these dimensions as reflections of the soul complex, as the higher self. The higher self has entered into the house, which is the universe, and has dispatched aspects of itself into each dimension to experience the vibration of these. That's the whole reason creation exists. It's for source to experience itself. And we too, as aspects of source, also seek to experience ourselves in the dimensions in the house. But in my father's house, there are many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you. And here's where it gets cosmic. This is our known universe with our dimensions and all of our aliens and the galaxies and everything happening. And it's cool. And this house is governed by a dominant energy, a dominant signature that we would call love, we would call light. That's the God of this house. God is love, we like to say, and it's true. But in these other houses, which is to say in these other universes, and indeed we live in a multiverse, with so an infinite amount of universes, we have dimensions that exist too that are nothing like our universe. They are also not organized according to the dominant energy of our house, which is love. And I once had an experience through a vision where I popped out of this house and spirit actually showed our entire universe, kind of like a dollhouse with different levels. It was cool. And then I went to the very top of the dollhouse, went to the roof. And once I did, I popped out and I went into a different house and I won't go too deeply into it. I wrote it all out. It's called absent lands. And it scared the crap out of me. I was taken into a different universe and I didn't recognize anything because I, I couldn't feel it because our energy is love and we familiar, we're, you will know them by their fruit, right? This is how we know each other. This is how we know what's good or bad. We move this way or that way based on this homing signal that we all have. But in these other houses and these other universes which contain their own dimensional structure, I couldn't feel my way through it. And in fact, when I first arrived in this experience, it looked to me like a moonscape, like there was nothing. It was desolate, like this weird silvery glow, kind of like 4D looks when we first pop out of 3D into 4D. There's this sort of moon glow aspect of 4D. It was similar to that until my companions who took me there sort of turned on a light and I was able to see things a little differently. And I, I, I cannot tell you how frightened I was not to be able to orient to love, not to be able to find God where I was. It was the freakiest thing I've ever experienced. But my companions who were in fact angelic said, don't worry. The reason you can't see it, the reason you can't feel it is because you don't know it, but it is always as good as or, or better than love. It's good. It's the prime energy as created by source. But they got their own gig going on. Let me just suffice it to say they have their own thing happening and it's nothing like ours. The closer those universes, which we could call houses, are to our house, the easier it is for them to jump in and have beings jump in, not unlike the shadow people as I've discussed them. This is my theory. I can't, who knows? I don't think they're from our house proper. I think they're from a universe close to ours. They pop in and pop out. But it's a, it's a weird, wild, and wacky universe. Let me tell you one last thing because I think it's so interesting, okay? And this is, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Christian <laughs> underpinnings, but that's just because that's where I'm from. I, I'm not, I don't profess to be a Christian. I, I lean toward esoteric Christianity, but it's got room for Hinduism and Buddhism and all kinds of different thought, but it's the language in which I speak. So don't get caught up if I say something about Jesus. Don't get all crazy, okay? Because this is just my language my paradigm but in the beginning was God source energy God was not an anthropomorphic human okay God was an energy and the word was with God and the word was God here's what that means to me based on what I've experienced and what's been told to me in the beginning was God 
And then God created through another phase of creation an entire class of beings meant to facilitate further creation and also organized in such a way so as to protect and support all of creation. And these are the beings we would call the archangels. These are truly the sons and the daughters of God. They are one removed away from source energy, which is why if we were to ever come into contact word with Archangel Michael in his full energetic form, we would not survive. This is why we have saints and different prophets who fall face first to the ground and say, don't kill me, man, because the energy is so overwhelming that they cannot, they cannot take it in. They cannot integrate it. And that's what energy, that's what Archangel, Archangelic energy feels like. And then this first creates first creation phase, which consisted of the archangels, the sons and the daughters of God, partnered with God at that point to bring about the next phase of creation. And in this phase, we have different, very high vibrational beings. Some of these being interdimensional and many of these also being angelic, but of the subclasses, as we would say, the angels who aren't the archangels necessarily, but who work under the purview of the archangels to do the various things that creation must do in order to create itself. And from that point, this second phase partners with source energy and archangels. It all comes back together and coalesces to bring about the next phase. And it's in this phase, I think it's either this phase or it's in the third phase or excuse me, second phase that the higher selves are created. You are your higher self having a very specific experience in a certain level or a floor in a specific house, but you exist on the floor having that experience. That's what this life is. But indeed you exist outside of the house. You have an omnidimensional aspect that as we speak now exists in many houses and your higher self, your omnidimensional God self is very proximate to source energy. We could call ourselves as we truly are, the grandchildren, if you will, of God. We are close to source energy. Our primary signal is a lot like source energy. That's what Christ is saying when he's saying, you are all gods. That's what Christ is saying when he says, greater things than I do will you do because you are divine. Who it is that you actually are is the being you ought to, is the space, the energy that you ought to be orienting from in this 3D reality, because if you can do that, you're a God in this reality. I kind of went on a tangent, but that's how creation was explained to me. That's how creation ex is expressed. And I think it's important because so many of us feel trapped in 3D reality. And if we, if our eyes stay lateral, if it stay, if they stay on the world, on the news, on what we're seeing when we're driving down the street. If our eyes stay on the world, we can very easily in a magnetic way, get sucked into a rabbit hole of a reality. And we can think this is all there is. This is all I am. And this is all I will ever be. We are so easily disconnected or separated from the omnidimensional crystal, the omnidimensional Christina, the omnidimensional I am. When Moses is talking to the burning bush and Moses says, who am I supposed to tell these, these people sent me? <laughs> who am I supposed to tell? What am I supposed to tell them? Source says, I am that I am. Tell them I am that I am sent you. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Moses in that moment, as we're taught, and of course, whatever, is speaking to his higher self his omnidimensional self. He's speaking to his personal I am. It's Moses who brings forth the teaching. It's Moses that brings forth the energy from the higher self Moses, which is the God-like Moses, which can inform 3D Mo Moses in this particular reality. We all have access to that. We are I am in 3D, but we are also I am that I am. The I am behind the I am. It's heavy, y'all, and it's powerful. We cannot get stuck in the trap 
of the illusion of 3D reality. And that's why we came here. We wanted to experience how easy it is to feel separate and disconnected from the I am that I am and from source energy and yet find our way back through the homing signal of love to that which we truly are and from whence we truly come. That's, that's the big work of this life. It's to be in this and yet not of it, not at all. And to act singularly, individually, which is an illusion, but to act in our own lives as a representative and as a reflection of that which created us, divine, high vibration, miraculous. If we can focus and or if we can first hook in to the truth of, of who it is that we really are, and believe the masters of your from all of the major religions and schools of thought who said you are divine if we can hook into the truth of that and then begin to run that energy that's how we change our life and we can use the fourth dimension which is the dimension of inspiration to access all of the things that spirit is sprinkling down like little glitter sparkles through the fourth dimension that we can make this world a better place. That's where we can find it. So we need to be meditating. We need to have practices and techniques that connect us with the I am that I am. Meditation is one of the most powerful ways to get there. Just be quiet a little bit. Just let the mind fall away, the chatter fall away, and just create a space where spirit can step in and just be with you. Not even say anything in particular. Just be with you. Just being with spirit allows our baseline signature, which is lower than God's energy, right? We're human, being in the, human beings in this reality. If we can just be proximate through meditation to source energy, that dominant signature, that divine signature will change our lower signature so that we become more like source energy. Our eyes are open, our vibration is raised. This is how all the miracles are added unto us. It's because we've changed our vibration and meditation is the fastest way to get there and also to hang out in 4D. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go Go to crystallinecompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.